<laughs> Time having arrived, I hereby call the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday, July 17, 2017, being at 7 p.m. Councilor. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I could ask to take uh, number six and seven out of order, please. Second. There's a motion on the floor to take number six <coughs> and number seven out of order. It was properly seconded. All in favor of doing that, please raise your hand. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to do six, seven, and then we'll go to one, please. Resolve to invite Mr. Bernie Hassan, a member of the Board of Directors, <coughs> for the Realtor Association of Southeastern Massachusetts to provide the City Council with an overview of the strong activity in the real estate market in Brockton and surrounding communities and the expected effects. He will also explain the differences from the previous housing boom to the one we are currently experiencing. Invited, Bernie Hassan, Board of Directors, <coughs> Realtor Association of Southeastern Massachusetts. Good evening, Mr. Hassan, if you could come forward to the podium, please. How are you tonight, sir? Very good, and you, sir. Good. Thanks for being here. Good. Do you have a statement or? Uh, how's everybody doing this afternoon, this That's evening? Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Pretty good. Great. Um, <laughs> I was asked to uh, come by Ward uh, Councilor uh, from Ward Two, uh, Ann Beauregard, and uh, just real quickly, uh, I'm getting these questions all the time. I, I'm getting them from city officials, uh, the general public. I don't <laughs> think it's any secret as to where the uh, housing market is. It's certainly booming. Uh, but uh, the year-over-year -year numbers, again, uh, coming out for uh, May and even June are 5 and 6 percent higher than they were a year ago at this time in terms of value. Uh, one of the significant issues, and this is not just housing, purchase housing, this is apartments as well, any kind of living dwelling. Uh, we have a severe shortage of living dwellings. There is not enough homes for people to purchase. There are not a enough apartments for people to rent. So uh, the difference between this one and the, and the last housing boom, the last housing boom we were in uh, was uh, fostered pr primarily by financing that, quite frankly, went south. And we all know what happened there. We all know that we had a significant recession uh, because of the housing industry and where that financing was. Uh, due to reforms in uh, finance, these things are, aren't occurring anymore. Most of the financing today is very safe. And of course, there's a lot of other economic factors. Unemployment is down, uh, so there's, there's money around for people to actually purchase homes with safe mortgage products. But again, what, we're hap what is happening now is, is not only are the prices going up, but the inventory continues to struggle to be there for the average consumer. So as a result, that drives the prices up again in an economy that quite frankly is already fairly robust in and of itself. Uh, so I don't know what the solution is. Uh, a, a lot of it uh, has to do with some of the things that uh, government leaders can do at the municipal, state, and federal level. But uh, again, it, it requires private development as well. And uh, just going forward, uh, I don't see this problem going away anytime soon. And one of the questions that was brought up to me was, you know, uh, foreclosures. We still see a lot of vacant properties in this town. We do have still an inventory of vacant properties across the country. Uh, many of those properties are uh, in that inventory simply because of the previous uh, financing prior to the recession. Many of us may be aware or uh, have knowledge of how they used to bundle these loans, and they are now stuck in limbo uh, in cities and towns all over the country. Uh, so there is still going to be some more foreclosure properties to come, but as you can see, many of you in your own districts, that there are in, there's inventory that's been boarded up and hanging around for years in, our, in, our, in every district in the city, pretty much. Uh, so that's what I bring to you uh, in terms of uh, information. Um, nobody's crying about if you're selling a property, you're making money. Um, mm -hmm. If you're trying to buy a property or rent a property, it's a struggle. Uh, we put a property out on the market, open house it on a Saturday or Sunday, have 20, 30, 40 people come through, 10, 15 offers, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars over the asking price. Apartment rentals. I, I had a friend of mine uh, call me and say, just can you help me, my son find an apartment? I went and I looked one up that happened to be an MLS called the uh, co broke agent that I knew. And I said, hey, can we help this guy out? He's got a son that's looking for an apartment. He says, sure. He goes, I've got a a hundred people have called and 35 applications, pull one down offline and, and jump in. Uh, so this is kind of unprecedented. We're in a 
you know, very low unemployment and good economy, but we're also lacking housing. This is part of the reason why we still have people around this state in hotels and motels being funded by the state living in hotels because there are no uh, apartments for people to rent. So that's what I bring you. If you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. Councilor Borgard, do you have any questions or follow-ups? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, the reason I had asked, uh, I didn't put Mr. Masson out of a hat. He's had over, what, 30 years of experience in real estate, and he serves on the Board of Directors for Realtors of Southeastern Mass. And what he wanted to emphasize also is, yes, Brockton, being a city, is receiving a great deal of this, but it's also throughout. And mostly, I wanted to highlight the difference between the past that we had such a problem and we had the highest foreclosure rates in the Commonwealth in both zip codes and how that this time around it looks like there's a little bit more security and less likely to happen in the magnitude that it transpired with the foreclosure rates. It, it is probably less likely, uh, but again, none of us can see into the future, but it is probably, the, the financing is significantly safer, let's just say that. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor uh, Monaghan followed by Barnes followed by Farwell. Yes, thanks. Good evening, Bernie. Um, <clears throat> last year we saw a big jump in the price of the multifamily homes. Are uh, we still going to see that same type of, type of jump this year? Well, you know what? That's the only category I didn't pull, but both the uh, categories that I've pulled here uh, significantly year, year over year are between 5, 6, and 7 percent, and the answer to that would be simply yes. Uh, it's traveling along the same route as all real estate is every, in every category. Um, year over year, yes. The multis went up more than the single-family homes, though, as far as percentage-wise. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And they don't seem to be slowing down either. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Bonds, please. Yes, thank you. Hi, Mr. Sun. How are you? Um, you mentioned in your opening statement that you see no hope for change and kind of this um, lack of resources for the demand that's out there. Can you just kind of get into that a little bit more? What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, clearly for the last at least 24 months, maybe even three years, uh, the inventory has lagged behind the sales. Again, you, and you can see that. And that goes with apartments as well. I mean, uh, we're not able to keep up with demand in new construction, new home, new apartment building starts. We have, we've always had a, a slow history of that in this part of the country, but it's, it's probably the worst that I've seen in the 30 years I've been doing this. Okay. And to, I guess, kind of bounce off what Councilor Monaghan said, so if the price of multifamily homes, if it continues to rise at, the, at an astronomical rate, I guess, I mean, if we take a look at last year to this year and anticipate for the years to come, um, <clears throat> Brockton has a lot of multifamilies, a lot of two, two families, many, many threes to sixes. So if people, I'm thinking if the value of them or their, their price is going up so much that people can't afford them, won't that take us right back into kind of the foreclosure situation and empty homes and blacked out buildings? Well, there is always that risk in a free economy. That's something that I don't know how we uh, adjust to. I, I can tell you this, uh, that the vast majority of these multis now, because of the price, are predominantly going owner-occupied, where somebody purchases and then lives there and you know, so. uses the other units as income mm -hmm. uh, because of the price. Uh, obviously, investors at the prices that we're seeing today aren't really uh, looking at those numbers as something they can sustain. Mm. Okay. Now, and uh, just actually tonight, too, I was speaking with somebody very knowledgeable in this field, and he was talking about uh, a lot of the loans that are out there are zombie loans. Is that something that you're familiar with? No, I'm not with? familiar with it. Okay. Maybe so somebody could explain it to me. If I can explain it the way he explained it, he said that pretty much what happens is um, people will come in and they live there for several years, not, not the entire loan time, um, and then they kind of just walk away. And it's not technically um, – oh, let well, me back up. So then they, they walk away from it. The bank forecloses on it, but then the bank also doesn't want to have anything to do with it, so they just kind of let it linger – well, I think that was primarily uh, something that went on in the earlier recession that we were talking about, um, where uh, a lot of the loans, quite frankly, you know, there are stories, and we won't go into all the stories, where the buyers just weren't qualified. And the mortgage market at that time uh, didn't have the securities on it that, it does, that they do today. Okay. So yes, that did happen. That did happen. Today, uh, like I said, the vast majority of these loans, owner-occupied loans, are government-backed. Uh, there's a lot of scrutiny on buyers today. 
Um, so I don't see it happening with these particular loans at this time. I, I, I think I may have missed a step in that, actually. Mm -hmm. When I was relaying it, I think there was something that he said that was... Um, that made it more uh, understandable. But there's one more thing he said too, that I guess there there have been some lobbying to the governor or to the state to do like a kind of forgiveness of some um, some tax title stuff, like with the title, when the title gets all oh. funky and when people walk away and, and nobody wants to deal with it because of the title. is Are you aware of that? Yes, and, and it gets very, which is why you see uh, vacant buildings in all your districts for the last several years that are boarded up and staying there because it gets complicated. Uh, the whole foreclosure process gets complicated mm -hmm. uh, by all these title issues and the bundling of these loans, the way they were bundled initially uh, when they were first written. Yes, But, it's but are you aware of the, the forgiveness proposal that's gone to the state? To, um, I'm not aware of that one, okay. I have to be honest with you, but there were several initiatives around the country. There was actually one in this city uh, just a couple of years ago trying to you know foster something that would uh, give debt forgiveness to people. There is some debt forgiveness uh, available to people when they've done a short sale. There was some, mm. uh, but you know, largely uh, when people walk away from these properties, banks just have to take them over right. and they have to untangle the bundle so that they can put them back on the market with a clean title in order to sell. And that's become a challenge for some of them. Okay, and one more last question. Did you, were you able to or did you think to pull up um, what banks own the most properties in the city of Brockton? So? No, I did not. Okay. I did not. I'm, I'm sure that's probably something you can look up and research, but I have not, no. Surely. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Council. Council Fowell, please. Uh, Councilor Monahan covered my subject area, so thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hassan? A point of information, Councilor Bonds, um, the receivership program, which was generated under the AG's office, it was Coakley, and now it's, it's, it's uh, the current AG. Uh, Brockton's uh, been able to deal with that, and what it does is it, it allows the receiver, it could be a developer, it could be an individual person, to get a superior loan over a bank. So if the bank doesn't foreclose on it, or even if they do and they just kind of put their hands up, receivership program has been beneficial to Brockton, Randolph, and Abington. You mean uh, with regard to my forgiveness question? Nope, to the zombie. Oh, oh, okay, okay. About. All right, great, thank you, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hassan? No. Seeing none, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. We're gonna go on to number seven, please. Do you like a motion to recommend that favorably? Or? Second. Second. Well, since the chief's here, I think we'll have him come up, but a point of information. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm talking about this. Yes. The resolve. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Time yeah. To resolve. Mm -hmm. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. 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 <laughs> Can you tell we're a little rusty in the summer? <laughs> motion made, probably second, favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Council Cruz. God, number seven, please. Resolve to invite Mr. Michael Williams, the fire chief for our city, to discuss the cost which he believes will be in the vicinity of $200,000 to $250,000 to keep the Crescent Street Fire Station in full working order with both a ladder truck and an engine truck for the remainder of the summer months for the residents of the east side. Invited, Michael Williams, Chief, Brockton Fire Department. Chief, good evening. Um, thank you for being here. Councilors, I just want to let you know, uh, CFO for the City of Brockton, Jay Conn, is on vacation this week. He didn't see, send me an email last week saying that he and the fire chief had had a sit down to discuss it. So uh, the chief is uh, ready, willing, and able to answer any questions. Uh, and the CFO supports what the chief's going to tell us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Councilor. So, Councilors, I, I just gave you a handout that I did, ran some quick numbers on two different issues. First issue being that the night of the budget hearings, we had a discussion on why it's that company every year that gets closed. Um, so on the first page, I just laid out the numbers and what, how they're looked at and explaining that Station 4 does the least amount of running per 2P stations throughout the city. Um, a couple other aspects is we look at fire protection um, in different areas of the city. Uh, the two and three family houses in the Campello section are, are in close proximity one another, mm -hmm. making that a fire hazard or a, a larger hazard than in some other areas of the city. That's something else that's looked at. Um, so I, as I said, you can see the run numbers for 2016 and the first six months of this year. That's that first page that you're looking at. 
Um, did anyone have any questions on that aspect? Council Fowler, you have a question for the chief? Uh, just a question on the handout, chief. I noticed that you did an overtime breakdown on page two. Uh, engine Company 4 out of commission June 19th to September 12th. Overtime to cover three firefighters per shift and the, the total for that, those 86 days, would be $361,000. But, but that would presume that you had to fill every position on overtime. You wouldn't schedule uh, all of the people on the engine company off at the same time on, on vacation, would you? In other words, you'd, you'd, you might have to call one person in one day, two people in a different day, or? Just, again, Council, I was, I was concerned with the first page first. So yep. do you want to go to the second page? Uh, yes, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, just so if we could take a look at the Are there any second. questions relative to the first page? No. Seeing none, we'll move on to the second. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. All right. Um, again, in the explanation, Councilors, um, the average overtime cost is figured at that $700 amount per shift. We average whether it be a captain, a lieutenant, or a firefighter, and also there's a aspect of that of what their education level is. Their overtime rates are different yeah. for what degree the firefighter or, or officer may have. And we figure that into, again, uh, basically a 12-hour average, two shifts per day, averaging the 12 hours. We don't break it up into the 10 or 14. And again, that's how we came to that average number, figuring on the two shifts per day, um, Again, this would be, let's say, a worst case scenario where I would need to hire three firefighters every shift for that engine company. So you're correct. There may be some days where I only needed to hire two, yeah. and it would be a little bit less. But again, all these amounts that you look at, even down towards the bottom of the page, those are all worst case scenarios. All right, I, well, I, I guess the political part of me would say that the public doesn't understand with a $406 million budget why we'd have to brown out an engine company. And I think that's why we ask these questions and why we have you here. Mm -hmm. uh, they just feel that somehow within that $406 million budget because of their respect for the fire service and for all that you do that we ought to be able to do something different. So, um, you know, that's between you and the mayor. We just react to the budget. Uh, I would hope we would get to a point where we would not have any engine companies down because like the police department, you have to plan for the unexpected. You, you literally don't know what's going to come in next hour, next day, next week. Right. And I would hate to be in a situation where we really missed that engine because of unfortunately something happening. So uh, I, agree. I think it's good that we study this issue and we, we get more familiar with what's going on. And thank you. You're welcome. Just to reiterate, Councilors, uh, the night of the budget hearings, um, I was not prepared to give you an exact number when we spoke. Um, I have since done the numbers. And again, for the whole cycle of these summer vacation periods, you can see that top number, what it would be for the worst, like I said, worst case scenario, needing three firefighters for that engine every shift. Um, again, because today's date, I looked at this, if we tried to make a move on this tomorrow, you can see what that number would be for the rest of the summer. And just arbitrarily, I picked August 1st. If we were to do it then, you can see what that might, could cost between now and the end of the vacation period. Well, bottom line is we, we don't need to micromanage the fire department. It's, it's, uh, it's very well run, and, and your men and women, are, they do a great job. And Thank you handle you. your overtime budget well. You handle your, your budget well. And, uh, uh, and I think we feel pretty reassured about the fire department in Brockton. So thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Fowler, thank you. Uh, Council Beauregard, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I file the resolve. Again, thank you, um, Chief, for coming in. And again, this is absolutely no reflection on how you're running the department. It's simply, I do get a lot of asks. Why is it closed? And um, you know, it, it, this is always a learning experience being a city council, just learning which is the ladder and which is, the, I mean, I see the ladder, which is the engine, and learning about what they um, provide for services. And I realize you don't just go out for fires, not just only, excuse me, I'll take that back. And I appreciate that you broke this down. Uh, we had spoken, and I put the 200000 to 250000 thinking that, okay, we were gonna start this in the middle end of July, and now we look at August 1st. I appreciate the fact that you've already spoken with the CFO. Mm -hmm. The idea is, first of all, 
to address this so that this summer we don't have any incidents. We have more people living in houses. We just had <laughs> that presentation. We have more people living in this community. We've built more. And again, we don't ever want to be in a situation where, how would I say, we could have, would have, should have. And I just feel that what firefighters do when they come to an emergency is vital and they're always needed and I appreciate like I said that you broke all this down and again we'll, you know we can make this open to the public and that's one of the reasons why I brought you up here is to address this I am hoping that we can come to some conclusion and then in the future you would never feel that you cannot come in front of City Council asking for this budget because Firefighters are not an extravagance. They're a necessity, and I realize that there's different levels of people's training, et cetera, and we have everything. We have close proximity buildings. We have an awful lot of animals we're learning about in this city. We also have older buildings, newer buildings, and challenges in individuals with challenges that live in those places. And I, and that's, that's why I brought this up, and I sincerely hope that my colleagues and I will support this favorably, and uh, any way I can assist you to see this um, you know, addressed so that uh, the members of not only Ward 5, but anyone else in the community know that we're at full um, you know, throttle with all our um, engines and ladders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Casa. Any other questions for the Chief? Council Rodriguez, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Chief, how are you? Good evening, Council. Uh, just a quick question for you. I mean, do you know, I don't know if you actually have any numbers that back this stuff up. Do you know when you are the, uh, at your busiest in terms of runs during the day? Is it like in the morning shift? Is it mid shift? Is, the, is it the night shift? Yeah, it tends to peak between three in the afternoon and seven in the evening. That makes sense. All right. So that being said, is it possible that you could kind of reschedule or work on your schedule around those times to have the, uh, the station open? That would be difficult okay. to That's open it like, on a part-time basis, let's say. Be so because the, guy, the, uh, the firefighters are in for what, a 12-hour shift? Is that how it goes? They, actually, they work 24s, 24s, but they're still broken down into two, two shifts, which is the 10-hour day and the 14-hour night, as was done in the past. Like I said, it's, it's still one 24-hour shift, but it's broken up into two time frames. It's either they're there or not there, basically. Right. So there's no way to to look into possibly doing something time-wise to... Uh... It would be very difficult. I mean, it's certainly not something that I'm opposed to. I could look into it. I don't, I don't believe it's been done in, in the Brockton at all. Well, and, you know how it is. We've got to think outside the box, sure. you know? I mean, yeah, this is I a, agree. a brand new world, and yep. we, uh, we're trying to, you know, I know I would try to make uh, sandwiches out of uh, pieces of leather and, uh, right. and things that we find on the floor somewhere. But, I mean, if it could actually work out, because I live on that side as well, too, and... I do get asked quite often, you know, why is it that it's the only station? Uh, not knowing the true, uh, you know, reasons behind this, sometimes it's kind of difficult for us to basically make a, um, somewhat of a, an educated uh, explanation, give an ex educated explanation to the people that are asking, which right. makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you have a, a station that has, you know, 8,000 plus runs versus another one that only has 4,000 runs, it makes sense that you close the 4,000 run versus the 8,000 one. Right. But, you know, if you could actually look into that possibility of doing some things, because I, I know it's kind of, you know, times are tough, and yeah. you know that as well as everybody else uh, in this in this city. So if, if we can look at something where we can kind of play with some numbers, move some things around, I think it might make sense. Yeah, a situation where we could get creative, yep. we could look at. Yeah, thank you, Chief. You're thank welcome. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for the Chief? Chief, I just want to thank you. You opened it up by saying you, you, you didn't have the ability to answer that question during the budget. You shouldn't have been expected to know the answer, but you, you spent a lot of time on this. We appreciate the due diligence well. you did. And also being creative, thinking outside the box, getting loaner vehicles from uh, far away, mm -hmm. way out of the Commonwealth. So we hope that the next mayor's budget has, you know, enough funds in there uh, to meet the needs of the men and women that serve the city, put their lives on the line. I want to thank everybody that's here tonight. Uh, and know that the city council is, is a supporter of, of the Brockton Fire Department. Thank you. Thank you. I entertain a motion, please. Motion to recommend favorably second. Motion made properly, second favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. Thank you, Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, now we're going to go back to number one, please. Reappointment. 
of Tim Sullivan of 208 Winter Street, Brockton, Mass, to the Brockton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners for a five-year term. Invited, Tim Sullivan, Brockton Housing Authority. Councilors, I believe that the, uh, there could be a Scrivener's error there. I don't believe that's the correct address, Mr. Oh. Sullivan. I, I know Councilor Isaac mentioned that. I think it's Peyton Court. Nine I believe Peyton so. Nine Peyton Court, I believe. Uh, again, Mr. Sullivan is also a school committee member from the ward. Uh, so if we could modify that. Is Mr. Sullivan here tonight? Entertain a motion. Motion to recommend favorable. Second. Second. Motion made properly uh, seconded. Favorable recommendation back to council. All in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. It's a favorable recommendation of reappointment back to the full council. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Reappointment of John Crowley as Chief of Police for the City of Brockton Police Department for a term of three years. Invited John Crowley, Chief, Brockton Police Department. Chief, good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Farwell. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a couple of remarks in this agenda item, and I want the Chief to know this has absolutely nothing to do with you. It's about the position of police chief and about uh, contract law. And I would say to my colleagues that there has been a valid employment contract executed by the Chief and by the Mayor. It's been approved as to form by the city solicitor. Uh, it goes back to May. Um, so I suspect that the performance standards, that is the payment to the chief, which would validate this contract, has also started. So I support the mayor's ability and right to appoint a person to the position of police chief and to execute this contract. But frankly, I do not believe this belongs in front of us. Um, it, it's not up to us to pass judgment on an employment contract written by the mayor with an employee. Uh, and I don't think it's our business to get involved with what really is an executive branch decision. Um, there are certain decisions that are strictly reserved for the mayor and a non-ordinance uh, person who was given an employment contract. And for that reason, I'm going to move to postpone this. Second. 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 Motion on the floor. Mr. On the motion, please. Uh, chair is going to just state something before you, Mr. Cruz. Um, past practice says uh, City Council with a legislative body. I've been on it 12 years. Mr. Ianieri has been longer. Mr. Cruz has been 12 years. Mr. Stanisky, 12 years. Um, we've never had to do this relative to a police chief. It's just never happened. Um, and I concur with you. I think you, you echoed the sentiments 100% accurate. Administrator vis-a-vis -vis the mayor uh, is the administrator of the city of Brockton. It's a binding contract with, with Mr. Mr. Crowley to be the police chief. It has nothing to do with us. It's not within our purview. I spoke to the city clerk. He concurred with that as well. Uh, that's what I wanted to say on the motion. Councilor Cruz, do you have anything on the motion? Actually, on the motion, I was only going to recommend because I agree completely. I've been here 12 years. And in fact, the first contract chief we had is sitting next to me. And he said we've never voted on it either. I actually would kindly request that you make that a table, not a postponement, because I don't think it needs to be brought up before us again. You want to withdraw? I'll, I'll withdraw the motion to postpone, if the second will, and I'll second. move to table. The second withdraw the motion? Second. There's a, there's a yeah, motion. So now that he's made a motion to postpone. Motion to table. table right? To table, and I'll second that. It's a second. There's no discussion. All in favor of table, please raise your hand. All opposed? Thank you. Chief Crowley, please know this isn't a personal thing. It was just relative to contract law. I understand. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go on to number three, please. Transfer of $25,000 from fiscal year 18 library ordinary maintenance to library personal services overtime. Invited Paul Engel, director, library. We're just going to take a one minute recess to let some people vacate. <laughs> Back in session, Councilors, Mr. Engel, I, I, I apologize. I just, out of respect for you, I wanted to make sure that the, the chamber was, uh, was quiet so we could hear you, sir. Thank you for being here tonight. Do you, uh, Thank you. have a statement for the Finance Committee? Uh, I, I really don't. Um, um, I'm just here to, to move some money. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Recommend favorably. Second. Um, Second. Second. On the motion, Councilor Rodriguez. Yeah, I do have a question, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Yes. Uh, according to the order, uh, the order that we're asking to, uh, to move here for you, 
You're asking for some police detail for two nights. Yes, sir. Why the two nights, not any other night, any, uh, in additional <laughs> nights? It's a great question. It was negotiated through collective bargaining between the city and the union way before I was here. Okay. My understanding is that the, um, the employees of the library on Mondays and Tuesday evenings when the main branch is open late weren't feeling very safe. And so they requested this or they negotiated this through collective bargaining. Um, and those are the only two nights that were open till eight, downtown. Okay, well, you know what? That was an easy one. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Thank you, there's a motion. It was properly seconded in favor of recommendation. Back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, have a good evening. Okay. We're gonna go on to number four, Madam Clerk. Order, appropriation of $400,000 from Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection <clears throat> Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant to DPW Refuse Division Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Fund. This grant consists of $200,000 for the purchase of 96 gallon wheeled recycled containers, $190,000 for the purchase of wheeled 35 gallon trash containers, and $20,000 for inland recycling instruction labels on the recycle containers. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Larry Rowley, Commissioner, Department of Public Works, Pat Sullivan, Contract Administrator, DPW Refuse. Councils, please remember Mr. Condon is on vacation this week and we thank the Commissioner, Mr. Sullivan, for being here. Commissioner, how are you tonight? I'm fine, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, I don't have much of a comment on this. It's a no match grant for the city. I do have to point out, if you add these figures up, out, it doesn't come out to 400, it comes out to 410. That 20,000 for the um, recycling should be 10,000. It was just a typo. Madam Clerk, if you can just uh, correct that uh, Scrivener's error from 20 to 10,000, please. Any, uh, any questions, Councilor Isaac? Thank you, actually no questions. I just wanna thank you and I want to thank uh, Pat Sullivan at the Refuse Department for working hard on this. I know that um, we've, this grant's been available for a while, but we're moving it forward now with, because uh, I believe it's going out to bid with the new contract, so this will all work together mm -hmm. to save money to the residents so they don't have to pay for the, um, for the new bins, correct? Correct. Okay, very good. So I just wanna thank you and I know we look forward to this. I know a lot of residents are looking forward to having these new um, trash bins with the covers attached to them. So, um, you know, we, I'm figuring it'll be at the end of the year, or the beginning of next year when it will happen, but um, we can't wait, so thank you. Council Isaac, like, during the budget, you came up with a great idea, red I and black colors for Brockton. Brockton. Do we have an black update on that? Black bins, red cover, I believe, yeah. on the recycle. We, we're ones. looking into that, Council. Right. We, and we can't, wait, we can't wait either to get this done. <laughs> Thank you. I think it'll help us with a lot of um, the trash that's on our street, a lot of trash yes. blowing around on the street. So I think it's a plus, and yeah, it's, it's going to help. help in many ways. So thank you. Thank and you. I see that, I'm sorry, the 10,000 for the instructions. So. Yes. Get, people will get instructions once this goes into place of what they can do and what they can't put in these yes. bins. Okay. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll say what you can do and what you can't do. It's going to be like in pictures to simplify it. With all due time, everything will fall into place. So this is just to get the uh, bins in Correct. for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Council Bonds, please. Yes, yeah, so now I, oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, hi, Commissioner. Thank Hello. you, Mr. President. I just have a question. So, well, not really a question, but just to clarify. So. As it stands now, every household gets two trash bins of trash to be able to, before they get the sticker? Correct. Okay, so now with this one, it says that um, uh, municipality must limit residential trash to no more than two 32 gallon barrels. So that's, this one is 35. So will we still be able to get two of those or, or will each unit get one? Oh, it's one? gonna be one 35 gallon and one 96 gallon for recycle. Okay, all right, so what? Per, so, per household. So what if I have more? What if I, what, can I u still use my old little trash no, can? No, you can use your bags, the Brockton bags. My green the, bags? Yes. Okay, um, and how do I get one? Do I go pick it up or will it be delivered on the route? The barrels? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll deliver them. Oh. <laughs> we'll throw, they'll be delivered. Council, you're not gonna have to do anything but throw your trash in it. Oh. 
okay. All right, great. Well, thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> thank you so much. Just made her day. <laughs> I have problems with trash at my house. Everybody knows that. Thank you, Council. <laughs> Council Rodriguez, please. <laughs> Put pose on him. <laughs> Sorry about the mattress. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Commissioner, how are you? Um, we had talked about this during the budget uh, hearings in terms of having those labels and instructions perhaps done in other languages as uh -huh. well. Uh, do you have anything in the plans, in the works? Yeah, absolutely. That you might be I able think to we do were going to do either three or four, three or four languages, the main languages that are spoken in the city. Yeah. Yes. Because one of the, uh, one of the things that I, I can see uh, happening now is that you, we're dealing with a lot, you know folks that, for instance, are not used to this whole process with recycling and all that other stuff. And I mentioned to you that you know the the old labels used to say you can't throw certain pizza boxes in the tr in the uh, mm. in the recycling bin, mm. and now we have to sit there and try to figure out which pizza you know pizza mm. pizza boxes we throw out. So. I think if we can be a little clear, are we de are we designing the uh, the labels or is it something that's already done? No, it's 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 going to be right. something that we we've, we're we're going to do. Um, it's pretty standard across whatever city and town is doing it now. We're going to try to do mostly pitches, what you can put in there and what you shouldn't put in there. Yeah. To make it easier. Because one of the issues that we have is that with people throwing certain things out or not throwing enough things out or too much stuff out, and then getting you know, those little, you know, green or whatever color tickets they get. So if we can make this thing a little, well, little th more. That's why we're, we're going with a smaller solid waste barrel, 35 gallon, because we're encouraging people to recycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we have a bigger barrel. And all these are going to be, um, they're totes. They're all going to have wheels on them with handles, so you can just bring it out to the curb. You don't have to pick anything up anymore. When do you foresee the launching of this? January. January. Is there any way you, we, we can do, utilize some of the some of the, um, the the local channels that we have to do some uh, education well, to our yes. folks to educate well, some people it, on how it, to do those in, things? In, in this RFP that we're putting out, there is an edu educational piece in there that hopefully during your ward, ward meetings, mm -hmm. that whoever the chosen vendor is will come and speak on this. No, but I'm saying on television, so we can get this thing into the homes of uh, yeah, we can we can put it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can yeah, do that. I, and I think that's, some, that's something we can do in the various languages and things like that to make sure that everybody understands. Yeah, the going. educational piece is key here because people have to know what they can do and what they can't do. So we're going we're gonna to make sure that's done. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for the we Commission? We recommend favorably. Second. Okay. Right. We've got a motion on the floor. It's properly second. A favorable recommendation back to the Council. If you're in favor of that, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to the full Council. Thank, Thank you, you Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, I can't wait. Yes. I'm going to go on to the, uh, the last agenda item of the evening, which is number five, Madam Clerk. Resolve, be it resolved, that the City Council requests that the City of Brockton's real estate custodian, Mr. Benjamin Albanese, the City Treasurer, Mr. Brophy, and the Mayor appear before the Finance Committee to provide a complete listing of what properties have been sold since his appointment, the schedule of the auction hearings, past, current, future, a full listing of properties currently listed as available, the amount of money raised submitted to the general account, and any other information pertinent to the information referenced above. Invited, Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Benjamin Albanese, Real Estate Custodian, Martin Asprofi, Treasurer, Tax Collector. Good evening, Attorney Albanese, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, just pieces of information, again, remember Mr. Conn is on vacation this week for this agenda item. Mr. Albanese, do you have any uh, statement for the committee or? Actually, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could interrupt, not to interrupt you, how, how are you doing, Mr. Albanese? Hello. Um, due to the fact that Mr. Albanese is the only one here, and um, I think this, I was actually talking to my colleague and we probably think that maybe the city solicitor should also be here as well. I'm wondering if we can maybe postpone this to the next FinCom meeting to be able to get um, some of the financials. And I would have liked to have received the, this information prior to the meeting to be able to evaluate it and to ask questions about it. It got um, sent out over well, a I week know, ago. I, I know that Mr. O'Donnell, the city assessor, did send some information out relative We sent a package out to everybody over a week ago. I didn't get it. But a very comprehensive package, I might add, too. Okay, I will request another one. Give it to me. Okay. So you're making a motion because some of these people are not here tonight, Council? Yeah. Yes, I mean, yes. Second. There's a Second. motion on the floor, properly seconded, postpone this matter to the next finance. And remember, 
uh, just for you, Mr. Albanese, as well. We're in summer session, so the next finance will be the third August. Monday in the month of August. Mm -hmm. Okay, so motion on the floor, property second. All in favor of that, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. Mr. Sullivan, could I ask a question? You may. I would just like to find out who received the package and who didn't. If I received didn't. an email from Mr. O'Donnell. With the file? Yes. Yes, yes. me too. Yeah. I did too. I did not. You didn't get one? You nope. got one. I received the packet at home, That's delivered city. by. Aren't you? Said. Oh, I didn't get that, and he lives down the street from me. I'll have to talk to him. <laughs> so, did you get one? So who didn't get one so I can make sure you get one? I believe Councillor Bonds did not get one. I didn't, I didn't get one. Mr. Rodriguez did not get one. Did you get one? Councilor Ms. Azak did not get one. That's three councillors. Okay. We'll make sure you get one. Well, wait a minute. What about Jen? <coughs> so, uh, again, Mr. Albany should be the third Monday in the month of August. That's the next time we're going to meet for FinCom. I may not be available. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If, if you're actually not going to be here, if you could just um, maybe let the clerk's office know, because if we have to postpone it, we can do it before we have everybody else come in. If, if, you, if you can anticipate you won't be here that day, that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. And thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. I got all dressed up for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look great, though. <laughs> there you go. Councilors, there are no other agenda items tonight. Just, again, please be, bear in mind, we will be meeting here next Monday night, full city council, 8 p.m. We are in summer session. Council Cruz, please. Just a reminder to the members of the Ordinance Committee, Tuesday evening, uh, next week, we have a, uh, an ordinance meeting here at 6.30. Any other piece of information for us? Council Staninsky, please. Chairman, if I might. Have no one personal privilege. Absolutely, sir. Saturday, I had the uh, pleasure of uh, going with uh, the Veterans Services Officer, Jack O'Connor, Marine Corps veteran, and myself. We went to uh, the baseball game with 2,000 other veterans of the Vietnam War 50 wow. years ago. And uh, I just want to let everybody in the room know the, the Red Sox were unbelievable. All the people that were in there doing everything were fantastic. And uh, we as veterans really appreciated it. It was really something. It was a great feeling. So I want you all to know that I thank all of you as they thanked us. Well, we want to thank you and Council Rodriguez for your service to our country. I'm and uh, the other question I have, Council Stanitsky, did you stay the 16 innings? No, I did oh. not stay the end. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Meeting here. Council Borgard, please. <laughs> yes, I want a moment of personal privilege. Yes, of Thank course. you. And uh, actually, mine is not as remarkable as uh, Councilor Studensky's. I uh, attended the Water Commission meeting last Monday, and we are currently still at the advisory level with our water. Again, that can always change, but that means that people can use their pools and water their lawns. So I, I just, uh, again, this can always change, but at, at this point, that was uh, one of the um, items mentioned. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Farwell, please. Yep, just very briefly, uh, Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor Stadensky and I recently attended the Jukebox 1944 10th presentation at the uh, VFW on North Quincy Street, and I'd like to thank Dennis Hersey and the people who put that together. And I have to tell you, um, to be able to go down the line and shake the hands of the veterans, most of whom were well over 90, who carried a rifle or served during World War II in defense of this country. It's one of the perks of this job. It's one of the things that really make you pause and think how grateful you are. So uh, I appreciated the evening with my colleagues and I appreciate the work of Mr. Hersey. Absolutely, Councilor, thank you. Councilor, just a piece of information. As the President of Council, and I, and I sent an email out, uh, forwarded from Mr. Rob May. I was invited and I, I am going tomorrow to the GAR room to sit down with Mr. May. Uh, and the mayor's office has, uh, has a consultant relative to planning initiatives. It was an email that I forwarded to each and every one of you. Uh, I will report back, but I will be there tomorrow at 4 o'clock. I'll let you know next Monday at Full City Council uh, how productive or non-productive it was. Any other things else before us? Seeing none, this meeting's adjourned.